uh, officially as a group. So I think we can start now for real. I mean, uh, welcome everybody. This is actually the first session of this uh, academic year um, cross ops logic seminar. And I think we are kicking off in, in a major way with uh, Stefan Lamp, uh, who is uh, um, uh, you know, a great figure in the area of computability theory. He has been at the uh, University of Wisconsin at Madison for many years now. It's sort of University of Wisconsin Madison for uh, logic, especially for computability theory, really. And uh, I'm very proud to, to have him here uh, to speak here at this, uh, at, at this seminar. And uh, I think uh, that that's all I wanted to say. I mean, I, and uh, I leave the floor to Stefan. Thanks uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, good thing you guys don't see me blush. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, let me uh, try to share the screen. It should be visible. The whole screen should be visible now. Yes, is it is. Correct? It is. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, uh, first of all, um, thanks uh, for the invitation to this uh, August seminar. I really uh, feel very alpine now to, to be part of this group. Um, it's it, it, it's great to be in this part of Europe for a while, and um, I hope uh, you, you you'll find the topic uh, interesting, which is uh, which is some that uh, um, a current Viennese, Dino Rosega, uh, came up with it initially, and he came to visit us in uh, uh, last spring, uh, and Uri and I. Uh, we started working with them on this problem, which then uh, went into uh, lots of other uh, different things. So um, let's see. Um, so the um, work is then as follows. Hold on a second. Let me just make sure I can actually. Okay, here we are. Um, so um, first of all, um, so the, the whole thing is about. Uh, uh, the characterization of complexity of some of the classes and models. We'll start with the arithmetic and we'll see how far we get after that. So, um, if we have a countable first order language, um, and we look at the family of countable L models, uh, then we can consider that as a subspace of Cantor space, uh, 2 to omega, uh, by the usual coding. Namely, you fix a list of all atomic sentences, call them phi i. Um, uh, with constant symbols from omega uh, to denote the elements uh, of M. And then we identify um, a model M with a path uh, through Kinder space such that uh, the model satisfies the uh, sentence phi i in the constant symbols, even only if p of i is equal to 1. Okay, this is kind of an obvious trick. And it's not hard to check that for any L theory t, uh, the family uh, C of L models of T forms a uh, Borel subset of uh, 2 the omega. Um, in fact, um, by uh, Watts' 1974 proof of a, a theorem from the thesis of Lopez Escobar 10 years before, this family is actually always a bold faced pi zero omega subset of T. <laughs> Since uh, it can be uh, pi zero omega uh, defined in the infinitary logic L omega one omega. So uh, naturally, uh, the question then comes up: uh, you know, when is this bound sharp? You know, you know when you know when is it? Uh, you know, when is the collection C uh, a pi zero omega uh, complete subset? Uh, so, of course, if T has an axiomatization which has bounded quantifier complexity, then the answer must be no, right? I mean, this is obvious because uh, in that case, you know, it, it, it's going to be pi zero n for some n, well, you know, whatever the bound on the, on, on the quantifier complexity is. Uh, so, Dino uh, raised this question for the uh, theory of true arithmetic. And in fact, he, he pub publicly did so on Mac Overflow in 2020. You can look it up. And he got some, you know, some reactions. Uh, some, some people started thinking about it, but uh, nothing happened um, for a while until he came to Madison last spring. And we started thinking about it a little more seriously. 
Um, and we realized that it was connected to an old theorem of uh, Solovey's, uh, which was actually not published. It is the unpublished notes from 1982 of Solovey's, uh, which were then uh, merged into a paper and extended. I, I should really say that Julia Knight uh, expanded Solovey's notes, uh, making it more general, as we'll see. Um, so Solovey's theorem is the following. If uh, T is a complete theory in, 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 in some, some language, and suppose R is transitive to X uh, and is an enumeration of a Scott set S, and I'll, I'll explain all these terms in a second, with functions T sub N, which are uniformly delta zero N of X um, computable, uh, so, so, so they're all delta zero N X uniformly in N, such that for each n, furthermore, this the limit of the um, in the R index t uh, the, the 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 R index uh, for the sigma n fragment of t can be gotten as the limit of a function t n s uh, such that for all t n s, furthermore, t n s will always be the index of a subset of the sigma n fragment of t. Then, under these conditions. T has a model M, which represents S, and this model has a Tommy diagram uh, computable in X. So let me now explain a few of these terms that, that, that I've thrown out here. I wanted to first state the theorem, and then I'm going to slowly try to explain what all these things are. So first of all, people probably know what a Scott set is. Right? So a Scott set is a, is a subset of the powers of omega with three properties. It is closed downward on term reusability, so if x is an s and y is term below x, then y is also an s. It is closed under join, so x and y and s implies x join y and s, and it is uh, closed under under uh, getting paths of infinite binary trees. So if you have an infinite binary tree, t, which is in s, then some path, p, through the tree must also lie in s. So that's the definition of Scott said, I'm sure you, most of you have seen this before. Um, enumeration is maybe a little more special term. Uh, so I call R enumeration of a Scott set if I can think of R as a, an infinite join of columns Ri. So think, think of R as being basically two dimensional. And the columns of R are, let's call them R sub i. And then script S is simply the uh, the collection of all columns Ri. So, so notice that there is, uh, there is of course, great ambiguity in how the Ri is organized. For example, any permutation of the columns will do. Also, the Ri's can be repeated. You know, there, there, there's no restriction on it whatsoever. The only thing is that um, we have a countable Scott set, obviously, and um, the countable, countably many sets in script S are simply listed as Ri, possibly with repetition. So exactly those come up. So R is enumeration if that, if that holds. So now I've explained two of the three terms that might be somewhat strange to you. The third one is actually a little unusual because it's not what you might expect. The word represents. So normally when we say countable model of arithmetic represents a countable Scott set S, we mean something about, you know, you know, by divisibility and so on, you know, it's a you know set of primes di 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 dividing dividing into some infinite number and so on. That's not how we're going to define it here because we don't have necessarily theory arithmetic. This is an arbitrary theory in an arbitrary language. So Nate came up with the following definition of represents. I I don't know whether it's original error, but certainly this is the first time I've seen it like that. Um, so Knight says. A count model M represents a countable Scott set, Scott set S if for all complete BN types gamma in variables U vector and X and all parameter tuples C vector from M, we have that gamma, the one type, gamma C bar X is realized in M if and only if the type gamma is in S and furthermore, the one type gamma C bar X is consistent with the elementary diagram of M. Okay, so notice that this, this, is, this is a vast generalization of the usual notion of represents where 
you know, we're, 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 we're just about divisibility about primes, you know, but this, this is a much more general definition. I should add, by the way, in case you are not familiar with notation BN, I didn't want to clutter the page even more. A BN type is simply, uh, so a BN formula is simply a, a Boolean combination of sigma N formulas. Okay, so therefore the BN type is simply, is simply the collection of all, a, 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 com, a, a complete consistent collection of sigma N uh, formulas in the variables U vector and X. All right, so by the way, if there are any questions, feel free to interrupt. I mean, this is a small enough crowd that it's okay to interrupt. Uh, so I'll give you just 20 seconds to think about the question. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. All right, so I put the theorem back on top because I wanted you to be able to stare at it a little longer. And I want to also discuss a little bit about how Julia presents the proof of Salome's theorem in her own way. So basically, she splits the proof into two lemmas. Uh, so lemma one is the following. Uh, it says, if I have an L model, so of course L is the language of, of T, if an L model which represents a countable Scott set S, and it has, and this Scott set S has numeration R, less than equal X, such that the collection of pairs I comma C bar where R I, remember this is the I throw of R, is the P1 type of C bar. And that set of, of, of such I comma C bar is sigma zero to relative to X. Then there is a model isomorphic to A called M, such that M is computable in X. Remember when I say a model is computable, that just means that the atomic diagram of M is computable, Turing reducible to X. Okay, so that, that's the first uh, <laughs> lemma, the, the way she writes it up. And the second lemma is actually what should come, what should kind of come first, but we'll see in, in a second why, why she put it second. Um, so suppose I have T, R, X, S, and a T, N as above in the theorem. Okay, so it's T a complete theory, R less than equal X in ratio of Scott said S, uh, <laughs> and T N are these functions with these properties. Then, T has a model A, which represents S, such as collection of pairs I comma C bar, Ri being the B1 type of C bar, is sigma zero to X. Now, it's not hard to see how these two lemmas together will prove the uh, Solovey's theorem. You first start with lemma two, right? You, 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 you take your theory T and then R and X and whatever, and you produce some model A, which has this property that this set of I comma C bar uh, is sigma uh, with this property is sigma zero two X. Then you can apply lemma one, which says that if I have this, this set of pairs, I comma C bar with this property, that's sigma zero two X, then, and then I cannot find, just find some arbitrary model A, but I can find a model M, which is isomorphic to A, which is actually reducible to X. Okay, so this is uh, this is Solovey's theorem, uh, and that's what that was our starting point. Um, so uh, let me repeat just uh, uh, Stefan, uh, uh, just a question uh, from Alberto. I'm uh, in this case, you are just representing the B one types, right? In some sense, I understand. In this case, yes, right, right, right. So, so, so before well, in your definition, you were asking for representing all B n types. Okay, okay, so if you, right, right, yes, right, 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 so, so that's precisely right. So, so represents in general means all BN types, but in this particular, in these lemmas, you just need to represent the B1 types. It, it, it's a technical thing to make the theorem come out just right. I mean, this is like, you know, I mean, this theorem is kind of magic to me, right? I mean, so it's, I mean, it's lemma two plus lemma one plus some massaging or something, some more work. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, literally, I mean, I mean, notice that in the end, you know, I mean, I mean, you, you don't actually, no, um, no, no, actually, notice that actually there is no massage necessary because, because since T has a model A, which represents S with oh, this special... Okay. Then you just plug it into lemma one, and now you don't care anymore. 
right? Okay. Because if I see. A and M are isomorphic, they're going to represent the same set script S. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, so that's that. So, so, so therefore, you don't. It is actually literally lemma two can't be with lemma one. Really gives the full proof of the theorem. There's no extra work after that. Okay. All right. So, um, so here I, I put lemmas one and two again, uh, just just for reference. So lemma one, uh, what is, is really the, the step two of the proof for Tolley's theorem, but it comes first in Julia's paper because it was proved using a quote simple fine injury argument. All simple means four pages of like you know fairly tedious fine injury argument. So it's a non-trivial fine injury argument. It's only four pages. Lemma two, on the other hand, is a full-blown worker's construction. In fact, Julia presents a new meta theorem at new at the time using alpha systems uh, in the style of Ash and Knight. Okay, so therefore, this this is you know this is really as lemma two is a serious construction which runs over like ten pages or so, and this this is all in a 1999 paper that you, that that's you know that you can read up if if, if you're interested in this particular argument. Um, so. Part of the proof for our theorem, which, which I haven't told yet, but which, which, I, which we will talk about, consists in verifying that Knight's, Julian Knight's proof are not, are not only correct, of course, but they're fully uniform. And secondly, they're effective in X, in a sense which I will make precise. Okay, so, 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 so there's an effective operator which, which from R, T, R, X, S, and the, and, the, and the TN spits out the M, basically. So that, that's, what we had to, that's what we had to figure out. And, 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 and how exactly to, to make that precise, that's actually what, what's going to happen. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to talk about So now um, I want to talk, talk about what I call our main theorem, and I will state it in the weakest form first, the most spe in this most specialized form. And then I'll then I'll go to more and more general forms. So the weakest, uh, the initial form, just answers Dino's question, namely, the family of models of true arithmetic is indeed pi zero omega complete. In fact, we can do a slightly better, namely, we, there's a continuous functional, which I mean, sorry, for any pi zero omega uh, boldface set P, there's a continuous functional which maps any P in P to a model of true arithmetic and any P not a P to a model which doesn't even satisfy PN arithmetic. Okay, so, 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 so it's, it, it, it's sort of a, a dichotomy, right? You, you're either going to get true arithmetic or you're not going to either even get PN arithmetic. That's, that's the theorem that, 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 that we started uh, with first. Um, Notice, by the way, that the hard part here is getting the continuous functional, which, which gives you an, uh, some kind of a weight reducibility. And that's really the crux of the matter. A Borel reduction would have been easy. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's, that's a fairly trivial observation, but the fact that you can get a continuous function like this, this is what makes this interesting and, and gives you the pi zero omega thickness. Um, more precisely, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to build a reduction gamma, so a Turing operator gamma, which maps uh, p to mp, and this and and this Turing operator will actually have be computable in R jump join c join p. So p, of course, is part of the input. R jump is simply the jump of this enumeration of the Scott set, and c is is what I'll call a Borel code, and I'll define this on the next slide. A Borel code for this uh, set P. Okay, so that that that's the plan. So this now, of course, if you have a computable operator which maps P to MP, then it, this is going to be continuous, right? This even even if it's relative to some fairly uh, fairly uh, complicated oracles, it's it, it's going to give a continuous function. All right, so let's uh, start talking about Borel codes. So we have a pi zero omega uh, set P, so therefore you can write a, you think of it as intersection of PNs. Each PN is a pi zero n set. For technical reasons, you start with n equal two, but you know it's it, that's really kind of irrelevant. 
And uh, so let's fix a computable basis for the topology of candor space, all of UI. I mean, you can think of it just an enumeration of all the cones, but it doesn't really matter. As long as just a computable basis will work. Uh, next, um, the Borel code for PN will now be a tree of height N, N plus one. So it'll, be, it'll consist precisely of, uh, of nodes of length uh, less or equal N plus one, with, with, with uh, entries being any integer. So kind of like in bare space, but cut off at N plus one, such that every node of length N has at least one extension in CN. Okay, so, 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 so you want to make sure that it's a full tree up to length N, and then some of the nodes are continue to length N plus one, there it stops. So, that, so that, that's for me the parallel code for PN. And the interpretation is that the set PN, for example, let's say, let's say N is odd, the set PN is given as intersection, union, intersection, union, and so on, of open sets. And of course, an arbitrary open set is simply at the union uh, let's see, I can actually, you guys can see my, my, my cursor here, right? So it is, uh, let me not do this here. Okay, so this part here is an arbitrary open set. And then you take intersection, union, intersection, union, and so on. You take it n many times for n is odd. And then you're going to get exactly uh, the, uh, um, you, 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 you're, you're, you're going to get a, a, a pi n set. And if n is even, you're, you're going to get, you know, uh, you know, you, know you, you, you start with an arbitrary uh, closed set, which of course is just intersection of, of basic uh, closed sets, and then you take union intersects, et cetera, uh, and, and you, you, you're you going to get your, your uh, uh, pi n, pi zero n set that way. All right. Now, normally when, when you, uh, when, when you do uh, Borel codes, um, the leaves are uh, labeled by, um, uh, open, uh, basic, uh, by open sets, uh, sorry, sorry, basic open sets and yes, no, but I mean, I, it's kind of implicit here, so I, so I suppress that. And normally the, uh, non-leaves are labeled by either union or intersection, but again, it's, it's implicit in the code, so I suppress that part, okay, because to, just to make it a little easier. Um, okay, so now, um, I'm also going to assume that uh, the PN form a descending uh, uh, chain of, of, of sets. So therefore, I can think of P as the intersection of PN uh, with a Borel code, which is precisely of this form. So basically, I'm saying that uh, uh, you are in, uh, uh, hold on a second, actually, uh, this should Actually, it should be an intersection, another thing about, right? Yeah, so it should be an intersection over N uh, of, 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 of these sets here. Sorry, that should be intersection. Okay, so that gives us a Borel code for the set. Um, for N greater or equal to two, we now also fix any completion TN of PN arithmetic plus sigma N minus one induction plus not sigma N induction. Of course, not sigma N induction just means Take take any completion of of, of, of sigma n minus one induction, which includes a failure of sigma n induction. So T n is basically where we start going into. Uh, uh, sorry, actually this would be P a minus. Okay, another typo here. So P a minus plus sigma n minus one induction plus not i sigma n. Okay, so that's that that that's that part. And now we want the following. We want that um, M p is a model of TA if P is in capital P and MP is a model of this theory TN, which is a, which fails to satisfy sigma N induction for P not in N, where N is the least uh, element, uh, the least number greater than or equal to, where you know where, where, where we see that P is not in PN. Is it, this is how we're going to show. It, this is the goal of, the, of this uh, construction here. Okay, so. Our proof then proceeds in two steps. First of all, from P, we need, we're going to construct the sequence of indices EPN, and we're going to just meet the conditions of Solovey's theorem. Remember what these were. First of all, these EPN are the indices of how the TPN are delta zero, uh, delta zero N 
relative to x. So therefore, there, it's a reduction, right? Relative, uh, you know, relative to x to the n minus one, and the indices are given in this in this sequence. Uh, second, uh, the uh, these functions t p n uh, all converge pointwise. Second, uh, third, sorry, third for every n. Uh, we have that uh, the final index, the final R index um, of, um, of, the, of, 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 the, of of the TP star n row is actually the correct sigma n fragment of TP, which is this complete theory, uh, which is a theory either TA or, or T sub n. And furthermore, for any n and s, any, any approximation to, uh, to, to this is going to be a subset of the true sigma n fragment of t. So this this is what we have to achieve according to the uh, to the conditional solvage theorem. And actually, we're 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 going to make life a little easier instead of having an approximation uh, to uh, you know you know which 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 depends on uh, on uh, s. We're we're actually going to have just a constant sequence. So basically. The uh, phi e n will always output i n, where i n is exactly the index of the uh, r column, uh, true fragment uh, of the sigma, uh, true sigma n fragment of TP. Okay, so you can actually do this, and this is why we get r jump instead of r in, in the oracle. But since we don't really care about optimizing the oracle, we just care about uh, this this whole thing being continuous. Uh, we, we we can allow ourselves that. And uh, oh, so yeah, okay. So let's see. So this this is the first step. Uh, I should add one more thing. The first step. So we also want, of course, like I said, TP to either be uh, true arithmetic, or we want TP uh, to be TN if P is not an N for the least N. Uh, and then the second step in 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 the construction is uh, to verify the Solvay's construction. Of, of MP, which is this construct is M from, from Solovey's theorem, from these indices is continuous. In fact, it's computable in X as defined before, R jump join C join P, remember that. that was. And that just requires a careful analysis of the proof Solovey's theorem as presented in Julia's paper. Um, a quick remark here. Um, you might wonder why do we need these inflammatory theories TN? Can we just do two theories? So it's like a theory for yes and a theory for no? Well, actually, that wouldn't work. For example, suppose I suppose I have a fixed theory T, which is a complete theory. Oh, sorry, I should say complete theory. T, which is not TA, and we just ask for MP to be a model of TA in one case, and a model is fixed uh, complete theory T in the other case. Then of course T A and T that must diverge to some fixed quantifier level. Right? I mean they're different theories, so there's got, there's got to be some formula of some fixed quantifier level where they diverge. And so we'd be in trouble with our construction. Another way of thinking about it is also that if this were possible, I could reverse the roles of true arithmetic and T and get that the models of sigma of of of, of, of T A also complement uh of of a pi zero omega set there therefore we would get a sigma zero omega complete family but of course that's nonsense by lopez escobar so so either either of these uh, observations leads to the leads to the, uh to the idea that this cannot possibly be true in fact it can't even have finally meaning but we really must have infinite many possible theories that come out of this construction that's one quick remark but now the, what you really want to know is what are we actually using about true arithmetic in the proof? I mean, it seems like kind of ad hoc to 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 uh, to use only true arithmetic. There seems to be some more going on. Well, the main feature that the sigma n fragment of T a uh, has is that the sigma n fragment of T a does not axiomatize all of T a for any n, and that allows us to diverge from true arithmetic arbitrarily late to some theory TP, as long as uh, once we find out that P is not in PN for some possibly very large PN. That, that is really the, the property that, that we need for our construction to work. And 
by an uneasy observation of Raven, and he doesn't claim any originality or says his space is just an application of Tarski's undefinability of truth, any completion of PA also has this property. So the theorem that I told you just, uh, just before is that we can also do this for any, for any completion of PA, so namely the family of miles of any completion T of P and arithmetic is pi zero or make complete. In fact, um, you have this reduction that uh, given a pi zero omega set P, there's a continuous functional which gives you either model of T or model of, of not PA. Okay, so, so, so we get this uh, main theorem version two. But then, um, so what, uh, so, Really, really, what, what we need is, is, is this fact above, right? That, that, that the sigma n fragment uh, of t does not uh, axiomatize t for any n. So we should be able to do better than that because, you know, because after all, you know, we're, you know, PA is a pretty strong theory. So um, how can we make our theorem, our theorem apply to more theories? Well, uh, so Rowan Cossack was visiting uh, Vienna a few weeks ago. And I asked him uh, kind of a silly question. I said, you know, I have this theorem here about PA. Can I make this work for PA minus? I mean, is it true that uh, that, that PA minus has the property that um, that that it, that is not axiomatizable by some by you know, by, by some bounded uh, quantifier complexity uh, theory? And Robin took one look at me and said, like. PA minus is finally axiomatized. What are we talking about? And I was like pretty embarrassed. I was like, okay, I really asked a stupid question. But then I remembered a couple of days later that I had asked the wrong question. The right question is not about PA minus, it's about completions of PA minus. So I had so, 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 so already Roman had already left, of course. So I, I sent him an email and I said, hey Roman, you know what? I really need to ask this question. Is it true that if I take completion of PA minus, uh, I can I, I, I can get this fact that the sigma n fragment doesn't axiomatize the full theory. And he said, well, let me ask around. So he asked Enayat, Enayat asked Visser, and they all came up with the following uh, very old uh, idea that so this goes back 40 years, uh, a notion due to good luck. Uh, so it's about sequential theories. So this, by the way, is not the original definition of putlock. I'll, 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 I'll hint at the original definition of putlock, but this is a much nicer definition, which is just the home of in, uh, Fisser from, from, last, from paper from last year. So if I have a possibly incomplete L theory, T, it's called sequential if it admits a definitional extension to what they call a junctive set theory. It, so this, this sounds like really, really terrible. So I had to really stare at this for a while. Really, all it means to follow. You take the you take the language L, and you add one new symbol, which they call element, and then you add two axioms. You say first of all, there is an empty set, and secondly, if I have an element, if I have a set X and a single and singleton set Y, then X unit single set uh, singleton Y exists also as a set. That's all you need. And you need to be able to do this in a, in, in a way so that the original theory T can define this predicate, uh, this new predicate element relation. Okay, so that's all it is. If you think about it for a minute, it's basically just says sequential theories allow for coding of finite sequences, like Gödel's beta function, if you remember that from uh, having taught logic at some point. But for example, we don't require extensionality or anything, anything fancy about that theory. All we really need is Gödel's beta function. In fact, it is via beta's Gödel function that Putlock's original definition of sequentiality of theories works. I mean, he really defined in terms of sequ you know, sequential theories, in terms of uh, the theory allows the beta function to hear the properties and so on. Okay, so that's sequential theories. So let me point out that the theory T to be sequential doesn't have to be uh, complete, but of course, if I extend the theory to a completion or to any super theory, I mean, it's still gonna be sequential. So sequential theories are close under extension. I mean, it's obvious, right? 
if if I can do it for sub theory, I can do it for a theory. So this this is clear from the definition. So here are some examples of sequential theories. So P A is one. I sigma zero one is is a fragment of of P A. P R A primitive recursive arithmetic is one. I delta zero plus x. So the extent of the, of the function n to n goes to two to the n. Um, Z F is a very strong uh, sequential theory, such as the other spectrum. But even P A minus by a theorem of Yerzhabek uh, from uh, uh, ten years ago is also sequential theory. So that, that says, oh, good. there's something going on with P A minus. But of P course, P A minus is just the the algebraic axioms for for P A, right? So without any exactly right. It's just the other way. It is the axioms of a discreetly ordered semi ring, right? A discreetly ordered commutative semi ring. I mean, that's, you know, so basically half a ring, right? I mean, the, the, the non-negative half of a ring. Yeah, that's all this, right? So it's, you know, so it's, it's like maybe the typical six acts when you think of, you know, in, in, in grade school. Yes. AS, which is the ax, the adjunctive set theory over the empty theory, is, of course, also sequential just by definition. But, for, but if you go even weaker, Robinson's Q, for example, is not sequential. Okay? It's too weak to allow for the interpretation of, uh, of, of, of the beta function. So, 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 you know, just, so there are some limits how low you can go, but it can go pretty low with, with, with sequential. Okay, so, uh, so what does that have to do with now with what we're doing? Well, so uh, Enayat and Fisser came up with this uh, with this theorem, which, which was precisely what we needed. Namely, if I have a completion um, of a sequential theory, I call it T in some finite language. The finite language is important, otherwise this won't work. Then um, the sigma n fragment of T does not act as the full theory, no matter how big the n. And I mean, they send me the proof, and you know it's basically a very careful analysis of Tarski's undefilability of truth, and then applying this to cuts in, in a model and so on. I mean, it's definitely stuff I would never have thought of, and so I'm glad they did, uh, because it gives us precisely what we need for for us now. Uh, so let's see. So for us. It allows us to strengthen our, strengthen our theorem as follows. Namely, the family of models of any completion of a sequential theory in a finite language, for example, PA minus, is also pi zero omega complete. Okay, so this is sort of like somewhat strongest theorem you might think of, you might hope for, except for the fact that, well, uh, we still don't quite know what sequential means in terms of um, this, uh, um, uh, this this property that the sigma n fragment does not axiomatize uh, t for any n. So really, the question is: Does the uh, theorem at the top of the slide actually characterize sequential theories, or uh, another put another way, the sequentiality right? The sequentiality characterizes the complexity of the family of models of T. Namely, clearly, if a theory is not sequ uh, is it, if the sigma n fragment already axiomatizes uh, T, then of course I cannot expect the, the the class of models to be a pi zero make complete. So I have to have some. I have to have this property. But once I have this property, I seem to be able to pull the theorem off. Anyway, that's the question that we that we're leaving open. And maybe somebody else uh, can answer it for us. In any case, uh, I think uh, I'm uh, I'm out of material here, so I'm ending a little early. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you very much. So thanks for a nice uh, <coughs> talk, which is sort of an intersection of several topics. I understand from. Uh, Right. There is descriptive set theory, proof theory, you know, models, uh, several different things. That's nice. It's an interesting mix of stuff that, yeah, some of which I had not heard of before. So, yeah, definitely sequential theories were definitely new for me. Yeah. So, are there any questions? <clears throat> so,
someone has, uh, has raised their hand. Yeah, or you can just pick up. I mean, I think we there is not so many people that we needed to. I think I saw a clap. I didn't see a raised hand, but I, I don't. I don't not, Don't know Webex well enough. No, I did raise my hand, but it was meant to be clapping, and I just made a mistake. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm trying to ask you a question. Can you go back to the previous slide, uh, Stefan, please? Sure. This <laughs> one. Yes. So, I mean. The question you're asking is not really whether you can reverse uh, the NIAT and Visser theorem, I guess, because probably you can just build uh, a theory on purpose such that uh, you cannot axiomatize it with any, you know, finite fragment of it, a fragment up to some finite level, but just the sequentiality seems to be, and at the same time avoid uh, this uh, sequentiality property, probably. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It I'm not a proof theorist. I, I dare no conjecture here. Sorry. Okay. Somebody no, because the, the question you are asking is whether sequentiality is character. Okay, because if you had if you had such a theory, then the answer to your open question would be in the negative, right? Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so, right. so, so yeah. So this really this really splits the two questions, right? You know, does uh, you know the sequentiality imply uh, this uh, this this? I mean, is it cruel to to sigma and fragment not actualize the full theory? And and of course, you know, depending on the answer, you get a second question, which is the question I have. Yes, because uh, it could also be that, uh, but maybe some theories yeah. com is uh, as a pi zero omega complete models. Uh, but not for the reason you found out that both right. theories have that, that characteristic. And that could be, I mean. Well, although, although the construction that we have kind of seems to indicate that, that, that this uh, sigma n fragment characterizing, um, a sigma n fragment actualizing the full theory seems to be the, the condition which is equivalent to uh the but to the pi zero make a complete uh completeness of the class of models but in I mean, some sense in that proof that of a pi zero omega completeness you are obtaining uh, maybe you want to go a few slides be before i mean when you were explaining still about uh, well, pair arithmetic i guess or two arithmetic uh, it seems that it could also be that i mean th that proof is proving a little, a little bit more than you would originally asked for. I mean, for pi zero omega completeness, you don't need to have this distinction between uh, models of true arithmetic and uh, failure uh, models, which are not even models of piano arithmetic. I mean, they could. Right. No, no, no. But, but, but what you need is a following. So let me just, let me actually go back just a little bit farther. Right. So, right. So what you need is, 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 the, is the top of this slide, right? You need uh, for it to, to replace T A by some by, by by some arbitrary complete theory T. You need to have that if P is in capital P, then T P is whatever theory T you want, and otherwise it's got to be some T N which is different from T. Okay. And and I mean the way the way this seems to work in the construction is that basically. You have to you have to accept larger and larger fragments of uh, uh, larger and larger sigma n fragments of the theory T, which which takes the place of T A here in order for me this construction to work out, because because it might take very long time until you see that P is actually not in P n. Sure. So do we have uh, other questions? If not, I think we can uh, thank Stefan again uh, with, uh, well, either virtual or real applause. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. So I think this year we are planning this uh, seminar to be held uh, about once a month. So the first Friday of every month. So the next meeting is on Friday 1st, uh, I think, which is a when, which is a Friday. On December 1st, which is a Friday. Okay, thank you very much for joining us and see you next month. Thanks, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs>